All right, this is the third video in a series on how to get a job working with FPGAs. The first video was how to write a great resume to get you in the door. The second video was once you're in the door, how to interview well. He gave you some example questions, things to practice with. And now, how to negotiate for a great salary in a job, a digital design job, working with FPGAs, VHDL, and Verilog. So uh, I'm gonna assume the first two steps went really well for you and you have a job offer. Congratulations, you should be excited. You have a job offer, that's great. Um, or if you're in the negotiation phase, this is also something you should check out. Um, so I'll give you some tips, things that I've learned. I've done this a few times from my personal experience and I've read a, I've read a decent amount about it. Here are some things I think would be helpful. First thing, if you currently have a job right now, you're employed, and your new job is asking, hey, how much do you make at your current position? Don't tell them. You don't need to. There's no reason. There's nothing beneficial for you telling them what you're currently making right now. The reason, probably one of the reasons you're looking for a new job is that you want a pay bump. You know, usually um, you can get that by jumping around, by, by job hopping. It's the sad state that we live in, but it's true. Um, so. They're asking you, they say, hey, can you just tell me real quick, maybe a job headhunter is asking for it just so they have a point of reference. Uh, they just want to make sure that everybody's happy and that you're going to get, uh, they'll get you for not having to pay as much as maybe you might want. Um, so instead, say something like, you know, I trust that you'll provide me an offer that takes into account my experience and the current market conditions. That's it. And they'll say, like, well, we just really want to give you a baseline, something to start with. Just say, you know, we'll just throw something out. I won't be offended, something like that. Because um, the ball's in their court now, not in yours. You know, they don't have something to pin the the low end of their of their offer with. You know, if you give them their current salary, they're going to know exactly where to start from the offer and just give you maybe 5 10%. I did this when I was job, um, one of my previous jobs. I I refused to tell HR my current salary at the new place and they ended up offering me like 20% more than I was currently making and I was able to counter that another 8% so it was like almost a 30% pay bump by changing jobs and there was no way that if I had told them how much I was making at my current job they would have offered me 20% more it wouldn't have happened so if you can avoid telling them that information I highly recommend that you're in the negotiation phase, so take a step back and think about this. You've gone through the resume phase, you've gone through the interview, they want you. It takes a long time for an employer to interview people and make a job offer and say that this is somebody we want to work with, and they've put a lot of skin in the game to get you to that point. Um, you know, so therefore, you should always ask. Um, you know, it never hurts to ask. If you're polite about it, Asking for whatever is important to you. What's what's important to you? Do you want more vacation time? Maybe that's something that's negotiable. Uh, do you are you working for a startup and equity is negotiable? Um, are you do you want a higher salary? Um, that's a common one. So asking never hurts. Like counter uh, whatever offer you're given, you should always ask for more. There's really no reason not to. Um, you want to do what's best for you, and it's best for that company too. You know they they're gonna say they don't want to pay you that much. They they want to be frugal and and be lean and all that. But like, if you want to stay at a place for a long time, you want to be happy with with your your income and your salary and the benefits and everything else. So um, I think it's it's a good thing. You know if you're if you wish like if you go into the job starting and wishing you had asked for more, that's not a great place to start off. And then you're constantly trying to catch up. Just ask for more in the in the interview process. They're not gonna say get out of here. Ever. And say like, hey, this is I really appreciate your offer. Is there any way you could move on this? If you if they say no, they say no. And you can say, okay, I'll accept. It's fine. Nobody gets burned. Okay, so how much? How much should you get paid? I probably should have started with this. Um, I don't know. I don't know how much you should get paid. It totally depends on how much experience you have and more than that, where you live. Uh, if you live in Silicon Valley, uh, I would expect a huge difference in salary compared to Mobile, Alabama. Uh, it's just the, the um, geographies are just so different and the pay is so different depending on where you live. It's probably also the cost of living is a lot cheaper in some places, so your salary should reflect not only uh, 
the hotness of the market, but also the cost of living for that particular market. So if you know if you if you really have no idea kind of like what to ask for, what is a good salary for your area, for that job, for your experience, check out Glassdoor.com. Um, great website, and you can really get a lot of good information from there. And this is just for the United States too. Like I don't, if you're talking about internationally, how much FPGA designers, F digital designers, should be expected to make? I really don't know. Um, don't have a ton of experience. You know, in the in the U.S., if you have five years of experience, I'd be expecting that you're making over a hundred thousand dollars probably. Um, it's a good career. You know, you can with an undergrad degree be making six figures in a few years rel with relative ease. Um, so yeah, great. Um, what is it like? What is working for as an FPGA engineer day to day like? Um, it's fun. Uh, I liked it. You know, you're kind of uh, a very super niche uh, job where a lot of people, is, so you, say you work on a multidiscipline team, a lot of different engineers, software engineers, program managers, you know, they might know what FPGA stands for and that you sit in front of a computer and you make them do stuff. But on a day to day level, you know, they don't, uh, they don't really have a great feel for exactly what it is that you're doing a lot of the time. So you're kind of like this, I don't know, uh, kind of have some mythic, mystical powers where you can just bend the ones and zeros to your whim. And uh, and that's cool. So and if you, you also have a lot of control over your own work environment. So if you like tools, don't like tools, you can usually change all that stuff because you're like a small team working on, uh, on your particular FPGA design. So you have a lot of control. Um, in general too, like the way I usually divide my time if I have an FPGA design to do, um, I spend a lot more time writing test bench code and, and simulation code than I do writing the actual RTL implementation of the of the module. So I would say it's probably 30% of my time I'll spend writing RTL. 50% of the time I'll spend writing test bench code and simulations to exercise that RTL. And then the last 20% maybe I'll be on the physical hardware. But in general, I don't like being on hardware. I don't like having to go in the lab and run tests and set up scope probes and all that stuff. So if I can avoid that, I absolutely will. Um, I'd much rather just sit in front of a computer and write tests uh, because the other thing about tests is you can put them as part of a regression suite and rerun regression and uh, you know check if your test pass or fail. Self-checking test benches are great, so you know get into that. Um, but in general, you know you spend you spend a lot of time you know, headphones on just cranking out code and I'm, it's kind of soothing in some way. Um, what about working for a startup? Um, I currently work for a startup and. Uh, it's definitely different from other large corporations that I've worked for in the past. Um, startups probably don't pay as much as a traditional large company, but you have this lottery ticket in your back pocket, which is equity. Uh, most startups will give you some small portion of ownership in, in uh, stock options in the company. So what that means is that maybe someday in the future, if the company is extremely valuable, those stock options will be extremely valuable more than likely they will be worth nothing because like 90% of startups end up failing. I mean, that's just the sad truth to it, but yours won't probably. Um, so anyway, I, I have some stock options. I look at it as kind of like a lottery ticket. Maybe it'll pay out, maybe it won't, but I don't bank on it. Um, as a side note, when you are interviewing and you're getting equity in a company for uh, when you're interviewing for a startup, as part of that negotiation phase, you can, you know, everything is negotiable, uh, including equity. So maybe they can't, maybe a, a startup is really cash strapped and they can't give you a higher salary, but they can move on the equity and give you a little bit more stock options. So um, never hurts to ask. Again, back to that. Um, those are all the tips I have for how to negotiate for a great job offer. If that's been helpful for you, please consider becoming a Patreon. I'll put a link to the Patreon page in the description below. Or if you want to play with FPGAs some more, maybe check out my Go board, which I created via Kickstarter. It's been really successful. I've sold hundreds of them, and uh, people really enjoy working with it. So check that out, too. Um, thanks very much.